1986, a Stephen King novella was transformed into a classic movie entitled Stand By Me. The success of the film has been much attributed to the casting. The director, Rob Reiner, was able to find four young actors to basically play themselves, and it translated to a truly authentic film. The movie stars Will Wheaton, River Phoenix, Jerry O'Connell, and Corey Feldman as four childhood friends. Their personalities were identical to the characters they portrayed. Will was shy and nerdy, River was cool and passionate, Jerry was funny, and Corey was angry and had a terrible relationship with his parents. So the parts were played to perfection, and the story was unforgettable. In 1985, author Gordy Lachance reads in the newspaper that his childhood best friend, Chris Chambers, has died. Gordy then narrates an extended flashback, later revealed to be a story he is writing. The flashback tells of a childhood incident when 12-year-old Gordy and his friends Chris Chambers, Vern Tessio, and Teddy Duchamp journeyed to find the body of a missing boy near the town of Castle Rock, Oregon during the Labor Day weekend of 1959. Gordy's parents are too busy grieving the recent death of his older brother, Denny, to pay any attention to Gordy. And while looking for money that he buried beneath his parents' porch, his friend Vern overhears his older brother, Billy, talking with a friend who recently saw the body of Ray Brower outside of town near the train tracks in the river. Billy doesn't want to report the body because doing so could draw attention to the fact that he and his friend recently stole a car. When Vern tells Gordy, Chris, and Teddy they decide to go looking for the body, hoping to become local heroes. After Chris steals his father's pistol, he and Gordy run into gang leader Ace and Chris's older brother Eyeball, who threaten them with a lit cigarette and steals Gordy's Yankees cap, which had been a gift from Gordy's brother. After their journey begins, the four stop for a drink of water at a junkyard. They trespass on the property and are caught by the owner and his dog Chopper. They run for their lives with Chopper in hot pursuit and barely escape over a fence. The junkyard owner identifies Teddy and calls his mentally ill father a loony. Teddy then tries to attack him but is restrained by the other boys. As the boys continue their hike, Chris encourages Gordy to fulfill his potential as a writer despite his father's disapproval. Later, Gordy and Vern are nearly run over by a train while walking across a train bridge, but Gordy saves both their lives by throwing himself and Vern off the bridge at the last second. That evening, Gordy tells an epic fictional story of David Lardass Hogan, an obese boy who is constantly bullied. Seeking revenge, Lardass enters a pie-eating contest and deliberately vomits, which induces mass vomiting among the other contestants and the audience. He calls it a barfarama. During that night, Chris confides in Gordy that he hates being associated with his family's reputation. Chris admits that he stole milk money at school. However, he later confesses and returns the money to a teacher. Despite this, Chris was suspended because the teacher spent the money on herself instead of turning it in. Still devastated by the teacher's betrayal, Chris breaks down and cries. The next day, the boys swim across a swamp and discover that it is filled with leeches, and Gordy briefly faints after finding a leech in his underwear. After a bit more hiking, the boys finally locate Ray Brower's body. The discovery is really traumatic for Gordy, who then wonders why his own brother had to die and why his father hates him. Chris disagrees, asserting that Gordy's father simply doesn't know him well. Then Ace and his gang arrive and announce that they are claiming the body and threaten to beat the four boys if they interfere. When Chris insults Ace and refuses to back down from him, Ace draws a switchblade to kill him. Gordy comes to Chris's aid by firing a shot in the air with Chris's father's gun and then points it at Ace. Ace demands that Gordy gives him the gun, but Gordy refuses, calling Ace a cheap dime store hood. Ace then taunts Gordy by asking whether he plans to shoot his entire gang, and Gordy responds, No Ace, just you. Ace and his gang depart vowing revenge. The four boys agree that it would not be right for anyone to get the credit for finding the body, and they report it to the authorities via an anonymous phone call. They walk back to Castle Rock and part ways, and the extended flashback ends. The present-day Gordy then reveals that Teddy and Vern had drifted away from him and Chris shortly after entering high school, and explains that Chris later went to college and became a lawyer, but his life was taken after he tried to break up a fight at a restaurant and was stabbed to death. Despite not having seen Chris for nearly 10 years, Gordy types that he will miss him forever. Gordy ends his story with the following words, I never had any friends later on like the ones I had when I was 12. Jesus, does anyone? He then takes a moment to ponder that, then goes outside to play with his son and his son's friend. Stand By Me was originally a story called The Body, which was part of Stephen King's 1982 collection, Different Seasons. The collection also included Rita Hayworth and the Shawshank Redemption, which was adapted into the Shawshank Redemption in 1994, and Apt Pupil, which was adapted for the big screen in 1998. 
For the movie, the setting was changed from Maine to Oregon, and the year was also adjusted from 1960 to 1959. One of the main selling points for the adaptation of the story came with the director that was initially attached to the project. Director Adrian Lin, known for directing several films including Flashdance and Fatal Attraction, originally was set to direct the movie. However, after wrapping up production on future cult classic Nine and a Half Weeks, he was exhausted from the project. Since he promised himself a restful vacation after the movie, the start of Stand By Me would need to be pushed until 1986. Producers couldn't work with that timeline, and instead passed the project to director Rob Reiner. Originally, the adult voice was to be played by David Dukes, and he had already filmed the part, but ultimately it was decided that he didn't have the right voice for the part. Then actor Michael McKean from This Is Spinal Tap gave it a shot, but it didn't work either. Finally, Richard Dreyfuss was hired and nailed the role of adult Gordy. Director Rob Reiner and Dreyfuss had known each other since they were 15 years old, so it was a good fit. The movie's countryside scenes were actually filmed in and around Brownsville, Oregon. At the Brownsville Visitor Center today, there is a map that displays all of the movie locations. Stand By Me was also shot in and around the Oregon towns of Eugene, Veneta, Franklin, and Cottage Grove. The only part of the movie shot in California was the scene where the boys outrun the train. During the outrun the train scene, the boys were never really in any danger. Part of the scene involved stunt doubles, which were women with close cropped hair made up to look like the boys. And part of it involved an extra long telephoto lens to make it look like the train was right behind the boys when actually it was still on the far side of the bridge. The young actors didn't feel a sense of danger until Reiner threatened them. He said, You see those guys? They don't want to push that dolly down the track anymore. And the reason they're getting tired is because of you. I told them if they weren't worried that the train was going to kill them, then they should worry that I was going to. And that's when they ran. The scene was filmed on the McLeod River Railroad, above Lake Britain Reservoir, near MacArthur Bernie Falls Memorial State Park in California. It took a full week to shoot, and plywood planks were laid across the ties to provide a safer surface on which they could run. The locomotive used for the scene is still in daily operation, and is used for excursion service on the Oregon Coast Scenic Railroad. Obviously, the underage actors in Stand By Me weren't allowed to smoke real cigarettes during filming. Director Rob Reiner had particular instructions on the type of prop cigarettes used in the scenes for the film, which were actually made from cabbage leaves. Rob Reiner, an avid non-smoker who campaigned for anti-smoking laws in California, insisted on it. After deciding on making the pie-eating scene as over-the-top as possible, the crew began to work on making it a memorable one. The scene itself includes residents of the city of Brownsville, Oregon as extras. The vomit itself had to be created with large mixtures of large curd cottage cheese and blueberry pie filling. Even the pies used in the film were purchased from a local bakery and packed with extra filling. To achieve the projectile vomit effect, the crew employed four or five guys to press down on a giant plunger on top of a cylinder, which pushed all five gallons of pie filling up a vacuum hose. The Barfarama was a success. The swamp used in the leech scene was a man-made pond dug out and filled with water by the production crew before the shoot. By the time Reiner was ready to film the scene, it was already overgrown with moss. Much like the man-made pond, the leeches themselves were also created by the crew. Will Wheaton confirmed that though they seemed real, they were in fact just well-made props by the special effects team. Although some fans would like to believe they used real leeches to get the best reactions from the actors, it simply isn't true. Some movie productions like to employ specific techniques to get genuine reactions from its actors. On the set of Stand By Me, the body discovery scene became a major turning point in the movie. Reiner wanted to capture that moment as genuinely as possible. According to Turner Classic Movies, the lead actors weren't allowed to see Ray Brower until they unveil him on camera. This method was used to unsettle the four boys and gain the best reaction possible. The film's original name was titled The Body, after the Stephen King story it was based on. The film's marketers, however, worried that it sounded like a horror movie or a bodybuilding film, so Reiner came up with the title Stand By Me based on the Ben E. King song that he picked to play out over the end of the film. The lasting impact of Stand By Me resonated with the cast, crew, and viewers of the film. Rob Reiner felt a special connection with the film after its completion. This inspiration led to the creation of his own production company named after the movie. His company, Castle Rock Entertainment, took its name from the fictitious town featured in the film. In an interview with the Archive of American Television, he stated that Stand By Me was the film that meant the most to him. 
Since 2007, the town of Brownsville, Oregon has continued to celebrate its claim to fame as one of the filming locations for the movie. They established the annual Stand By Me Day that involves events from the film, including a pieing contest. The town even places a penny in the street for visitors to find, reminiscent of Vern's scene from the film. For the 25th anniversary of the film, the cast revisited the location for interviews, contests, and even an outdoor screening. The town officially declared July 23rd as its permanent Stand By Me Day in 2013 with fans returning each year to celebrate the movie. Make sure to check out the movie trailer for Stand By Me, which is available in the description below. Stay tuned for more episodes, and thank you so much for watching.